Global warming and the finite amount of fossil fuels are forcing humanity to think more and more about renewable energy sources. In this video you will see how people use one source of renewable energy, wind. We will look at where wind turbines are installed, what types of turbines there are, and how they are arranged inside. To begin with, turbines are installed in two places, on land, and at sea. On land, they are installed mainly away from cities, as they produce a lot of noise and this can disturb people. Offshore turbines differ from their land-based twin only in size and method of installation. Such large turbines are not installed on land because the transportation of turbine parts takes place on ordinary roads and almost always, it is simply impossible to transport such large parts through city streets or ordinary roads with infrastructure. While on land the largest turbine is about 175 meters high, a offshore turbine can reach 260 meters in height. One of these giants is produced by GE model Heliadi X. One such giant turbine could power 16,000 average homes for a year. It really is a gigantic machine with an impressive size. Look how big it is compared to the Statue of Liberty. The turbine is almost three times higher. This turbine is almost as tall as the Eiffel Tower. One blade is 107 meters long, that's more than the length of a Boeing 747. Let's take a look at how these amazing machines are built, using a large multi-megawatt turbine as an example. On land, it all starts with the foundation. Since the weight and size of the turbines are not small, the foundation is made strong and large. A large foundation pit is dug in the ground, in which they make a frame of rebar. In this frame immediately installed special fasteners. And all this is filled with strong concrete. This creates a large foundation that can support the weight of the turbine and lateral loads so that the turbine does not fall in strong winds. The main tower can be made of different materials. It all depends on the turbine manufacturer's company. It can be columns made of light but strong composite materials, concrete with rebar or metal. They can be made up of either large pieces or smaller pieces. They are set on top of each other with a crane, and fastened to each other, one by one, with a large number of bolts and nuts. At the base of the tower, there is a door to a protected compartment where the turbine control cabinet is located. The cabinet is mounted on a platform, which is attached to the tower. There is also a ladder leading up to the nacelle. Since the nacelle is very high, there is often also an elevator that can accommodate one or two people. There can be several ladders, separated from each other by several platforms. The platforms are made of metal or wood and are well anchored to the walls of the tower. This is also where the main cable coming down from the nacelle is located. Up to some height this cable is attached to the walls of the tower. Around the middle of the tower, the cable is no longer attached to the walls, but hangs freely from the top. This is necessary so that the nacelle can rotate in the direction of the wind and the cable can twist freely and not break. At the top of the tower is the last platform, which is also for people's safety, because at the top of the nacelle we just have a hole that we climb into. A nacelle is installed at the very top of the tower. It is attached to the tower through a ring that can rotate around its axis. To rotate the nacelle there are several electric motors that rotate the entire nacelle relative to the tower. These motors have a small gearbox which, using a set of gears, turns a fast low force rotation into a slow high force rotation. Thanks to this gearbox, these small engines can easily rotate a multi-ton nacelle. Basically, the nacelle is a box with internal mechanisms. 
The box is enclosed by lightweight fiberglass panels that are attached to a metal frame. In turn, the frame is attached to a sturdy metal frame. All of the turbine mechanisms are mounted on the frame. In most cases, all turbines have similar components. Climate sensors, transformer, electric generator, cooling system, brake system, gearbox, main shaft, hub, and blades. Let's start with the blades. The blades are made of lightweight composite material, fiberglass. They are empty inside and have a similar shape to an airplane wing. The base of the blade is attached to the hub via a ring that can rotate around its axis, which allows you to adjust the position of the blade according to the strength of the wind. The rotation of the blade is carried out by electric motors attached to the hub. The hub is made of metal and the turbine main shaft is attached to it. This shaft is attached to the frame through two large bearings. The shaft is connected to a gearbox. This gearbox increases the number of revolutions per minute. The turbine's main shaft rotates at about 12 to 17 revolutions per minute. The gearbox increases this number about 100 times. As a result, the shaft coming out of the gearbox rotates at about 1,500 revolutions per minute. The output shaft turns a large generator that generates electricity. While generating electricity, the generator heats up, so it needs to be cooled. This powerful turbine uses liquid cooling of the generator. The coolant is pumped by a pump into special cavities in the generator. Inside the generator, the fluid is heated. Then it passes through the pipes to the radiators, where it is cooled by the fans. From the radiators the fluid flows back to the pump and so on in a circle. Less powerful turbines do not have a liquid cooling system. In such turbines, the generator is simply cooled by air with a fan. This is where the brake system is installed. This brake serves to stop the turbine completely during strong winds so that the blades cannot rotate too fast, since rapid rotation can damage or destroy the turbine. And the last system that every turbine has, is a set of climate sensors. This sensor monitors the wind direction. This sensor measures the strength of the wind. Based on this data, the turbine can take the optimum position for maximum efficiency and performance. So we have seen how one type of turbine is built, they are called turbines with a gearbox. There are also turbines of the second type called, direct drive turbines. They differ in that these turbines do not have a gearbox, and the generator is made very large. This big round construction is the generator. In these turbines, the hub is connected directly to the generator rotor. This type of turbine is considered more reliable than turbines with a gearbox, but direct drive turbines are more expensive to make. There is a third type of wind generators they are called, vertical wind generators. This type of power generators is not very common because it has a low efficiency in a constant strong wind. But such wind generators are often used in residential areas with a high density of buildings. In such conditions, this type of generators is more efficient than the previous two types of turbines. Thanks for watching. Write in the comments about what things you would like to see in videos like this and we will try to fulfill your wishes.